So Portland, Oregon, for 57 days, had violent stuff going on. 57 days. And it's only three days ago that Donald Trump ordered federal agents into Portland, Oregon, to protect the federal buildings and the people who work in them. Three days. So it's 54 days Mayor Ted Wheeler and the governor of Oregon couldn't control it. Yet, magically, the whole thing is Trump's fault. We'll tape. You'll recall last week, President Trump said he would, quote, dominate protesters. He's making good on that threat by sending his troops to cities like Portland, Oregon. And we've made it very clear they're not needed here, they're not wanted here, and we want them to leave. They're escalating what's an already tense situation, and frankly, they're making things much worse. Insane. Okay, insane. Much worse? There's already been $25 million worth of damage in downtown Portland, Oregon. Already. All right? They won't tell us, the authorities in Multnomah County, how many people have been hurt or killed. They won't put those out. But I'll tell you what happened last night. All right? At midnight, a thousand people gathered at the federal courthouse and tried to set it on fire. Last night, a thousand people. And they were tear gassed by the feds to break them up. All right? Wheeler is an idiot. And I use that word literally. He's not smart enough. He's not honest enough. He's not tough enough. He can't run the city. I lived in Portland, Oregon. It's a beautiful city. It's nicknamed the Rose City. All right? But it's gone increasingly radical left over the years. And the people there seem to be okay with it. You can't even walk in Pioneer Square because it's dominated by heroin addicts and dope pushers. The main square in the town. Visible. They don't care. You think people who own property in Portland, Oregon, all right, you got to get out of there. Same thing in Seattle. Your property is going to be 50% of what you bought it for. Nobody's going to go to those places. It's anarchy. Bill O'Reilly is back on TV and only on The First. No spin news every weeknight at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on The First.